Hello guys, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the functional position of the hand and that is going to be the last video of the hand complex. If you haven't checked out my whole playlist, go to my YouTube channel and check out the playlist section where I have made playlist on all the joints that is shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, all the biomechanics is discussed in detail. Okay. And also, if you want to refer to all my notes, you can check out my Instagram over here. See, check this out. And here you will find all my notes in detail arranged in a specific order, right? So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to talk about the functional position of your wrist and hand which is the last topic and what is the position this you can see the picture over here that is the functional position now before we understand the position we need to understand what is the major function of your hand complex the two major functions are motor control because you have to hold the object right and manipulate it within your hand and the second is the sensory feedback the sensations from your fingers have to be sent back to the brain in the most efficient manner and the brain has to know what exactly you are dealing with so that is the second function and these two functions have to be supported really well by the hand and for that there is a specific position that we have figured out and that is this position of the hand which is very functional right so let's have a look at that what does it involve if you can see the wrist is in slight extension and apart from that, there is slight amount of ulnar deviation. So that is what I have mentioned here. The wrist is in 20 degrees of extension and 10 degrees of ulnar deviation. If you move to the fingers, there is some amount of flexion at MCP joint, correct? And then if you go ahead, IP and your DIP, there is still some amount of flexion. So your 45 degree of MCP flexion and 30 degree of IP flexion. And then also DIP, there is some amount of flexion, which is very minimal, right? So why is this position important? This position is important because if you see how the fingers are placed, it optimizes the fingers for flexion power, right? If you have to grab something, the tendons are placed in such a way that they can generate a large amount of force and all the muscles are, are along with the tendons, they are present at a very equal tension. That means the flexors are not too stretched or extensors are not too stretched. And because of this positioning, they can generate a lot of force from this position. And that's why this is a functional position. So this part, what I just covered right now, covered the motor aspect of it. What about the sensory? You can see they are positioned in such a way that even <clears throat> if you don't have much control over the functions, like that is the flexion, just by touching, you are able to get a good contact with the object and it provides the best opportunity for your disabled hand to interact with the brain by sending its signal. So that is why it is a functional position of the hand. And if you notice, it looks somewhat similar to your cylindrical grip, correct? So this is all we had for the functional position of hand. Now, before we conclude the whole hand complex topic, I just wanted to mention some of the important topics that you need to keep in mind before studying your wrist and hand complex, right? So the major topics that you need to look at are the first the anatomy, right? Anatomy of your wrist, all the bones of the wrist, how they are positioned. And once you understand the anatomy, you move slightly deeper to the biomechanics of flexion and extension, the arthrokinematic that is present at the wrist joint. All of this I have mentioned and I've covered this in detail in my playlist. So you can check out that. Next, if you go ahead, the major thing that you need to understand over here is apart from the anatomy, which will form the basics, your extensor mechanism and flexor mechanism of the hand that will cover the major chunk of your wrist and hand biomechanics, right? Hand biomechanics. And also then if you go ahead, the prehensions that we just covered in last few videos, right? So that would be the final part. And with that, I think you'll have a very solid base for your hand biomechanics. I hope I made the whole series very simple. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section below. And also feel free to message me on Instagram. I'll try to solve most of your doubts. Next video, we will be starting with your elbow complex. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching.